Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out our YouTube page for today's message. Um, my prayer for you today is that as you uh, watch and listen uh, to the message that, that God speaks to you in such a profound way and that through Him your life is transformed. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching our video and uh, we're praying for you. We love you and God bless. Tay, could you play a little bit with the... You know, this morning as we uh, take in this idea of a breakthrough and victory, I wonder how many in here this morning desperately need a victory. You know, if we'd bow our heads and just, just take in this moment of just basking in the Spirit. Thinking about who God is. And we've, we've come out of a, a time of revival here at SEC. Where if you were here at any, any of the evenings, you, you got to experience God moving and breaking through and providing victory for those who desperately needed it. Heavenly Father, God, thank you. God, thank you for who you are. God, I know there's a lot of festivities going on right now. We have a race just a couple miles away. We have people on vacation. But what's awesome, God, is, is rather we have people online or they're in this room or they're on vacation or at a race, God, we know that you are there with them as you are with us. And God, as I've seen you, as I watched you move last week, and see lives change and lives transformed and knowing that it was only the beginning of what you were about to do. So God, you're here. And God, I'm so thankful. And as you stay here and your spirit is here, Lord, I pray if there's one in this room and there's one online, that they would have an encounter and an experience like no other. God, use me as just a vessel to preach your word. Not my words, not my thoughts, God, yours. And God, we are careful and we are intentional to give you all the praise and all the glory. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. Thank you, Mateo. Well, good morning. Thank you for being here. All you that didn't have race plans or vacation plans yet. We're thankful that you're here and we love that you're here and joining us online. Thank you for being there with us. And, you know, this morning we're in week nine of our series, The Body. And what this, um, what I would say groundbreaking, um, kind of a, a foundation of what we're doing here with our new mission and vision here at SEC is laying a foundation of what it means to be the body of Christ. Because you and I have this mighty calling on our lives, right? We've been called to move and act and be the hands and feet of Jesus. We come here to gather to fellowship, to worship together, to get refreshed, to go out, to begin the ministry or, or to continue the ministry that God has given each one of us. And so this series, I don't know about you, at least I've gotten a lot out of writing and preaching it. I don't know if you guys got anything out of it, um, but, but God has spoken to me a lot. And I'm excited. I mean, we're only tip, we're at the tip of the iceberg of where we're going with this series. 
And, and, and I'm going to, I know Pastor Ryan's supposed to announce it at the end, but June is going to be our, our month as we focus on world missions. And so next week, we're going to have our dear uh, Dr. Blake, our, our own district superintendent, is going to be here. Um, he's going to preach about his experience through, at Papua New Guinea. And then some of you um, that have been at SEC for quite a while, on June 13th, Pastor Jeremy Heights will be back. And if you were with us on Vine Street and we were up on, um, in Castleton, you would know that Pastor Jeremy and his family moved and left SEC to go and be missionaries over in Africa. And so he's going to come back and preach. And, and trust me, both of those gentlemen, uh, Dr. Blake and, 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 and Pastor Hyatt, I, they are phenomenal speakers. So let me encourage you to make sure you're here um, on those two days because it is, it is going to be a treat for you and, and I'm excited of what God's doing. So we're going to focus on world missions for the month of June because that is a, that's one of our callings as a church. And, that's, and we want to fulfill that calling because that's exactly what uh, Jesus wants us to do. And, and this, is, this message today, this one day principle as we call it, um, is kind of a, uh, an opening to where we're going. And, and one of the things here at SEC, as I talked about, we have a new mission, a new vision that we kicked off. Our, our vision, which is what we're gonna talk about um, with world missions, is to make the love of Jesus Christ known throughout the world. That's what we've been called to do. It is a huge vision. It's a huge um, a thing for us to do as followers. From It's hard to think of, of how us, these, uh, us here in Plainfield, Indiana, can have an effect across the world. But we're going to have two men that God used, two families that God used in a mighty way to make the love of Jesus Christ known throughout the world. And our mission is, is, is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Very simple, because that's what we've been called to do with the Great Commission. And so when we think about the vision and mission, there's one thing that even before I was, I was called and, and elected as lead pastor of SEC, we had this thing called the one day principle. Now, if you've taken our membership class, you, you'll, you'll learn about the one day principle. And it's basically you and I understanding um, that, that the one day principle is based on um, that one day could be your day, right? One day could be your day when you encounter and you experience Jesus and you give your life to him. And so that kind of, along with our mission and vision, it kind of drives what we do here at SEC. Because we believe when you come through our doors, we want you to encounter God. And then not only do we want you to encounter him, we want you to experience him like no other. Now, one of the common questions that we get that people will ask us is, is, is why do we keep it so dark in here? Well, obviously, so you guys can sleep while I'm preaching. We want to make it very comfortable for you. But honestly, don't sleep. But honestly, we keep it dark because we want a distraction-free environment. We want you to be focused on the worship. See, what I love about our worship team and Pastor Heather and, and our worship team is that they're not here to perform they're not here just to sing to you. They're here to worship with you. And then when, when I come up here to preach or Pastor Ryan or Pastor Dave, when they come up and preach, we want you to have uh, your mind and your heart so focused on what God's trying to say to you. We don't want any distractions. Because let's be honest, we are a very highly distractible culture kind of a people, right? Squirrel, right? I mean, we, we lose focus easy. And so we want to keep distraction because we know that when we talk about the one day principle, it could be your one day that you get to encounter Jesus and experience him for the very first time. And what we're going to talk about today, I absolutely love this story. I love this, uh, this, this, this passage in the Bible because I believe it really opens up to you and I being used by Jesus like we never thought before. 
And it takes one thing, a simple word of yes. Obedience. Obedience to God to say, yes, God, send me, use me, do what you'll want, for this is your life. So if you would, turn with me. Uh, I'm gonna be, we're, we're continue on in, in the book of Acts, if you'd stand with me. We're gonna be in Acts chapter eight, and I'm gonna be verses 26 through 39. Acts chapter eight, verses 26 through 39. And if you got your Bibles, Mr. Paul back there put the lights on for you. If you have it on your phone, it's going to be up on the screen. If you're joining us online, it's going to be down there. We want you to read God's word. So Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 26. He says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Kandak, queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Verse 30. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip said. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, They came up to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you. God, I am so thankful for who you are and what you continue to do. God, this this passage this morning, God, I pray that, that we as the body, as individuals, God, that we would learn from Philip's obedience and his simply following you where you sent him. So God, this morning as I preach your holy word, God, I pray that it pierces our hearts and our minds are open to what you want to tell each and every one of us. God, we give you all the glory and all the praise. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You can have a seat. You know, I love that story. You know, first of all, if you look at um, a, a Philip, um, you know, I'm going to take you back. I mean, we've been gone for a little bit here uh, between our our basic training over there and our Mother's Day service and our revival. But I'm gonna take you back to about a month ago when when Pastor Ryan preached a challenging message called Help Wanted. And you read that from Acts 6. Basically what that was is they had, as the apostles were spread out and they were, were, were preaching God's word, people were finding Jesus and they were accepting him, you know, by the thousands they realized there were some others that were kind of being neglected. One of the uh, things from Acts 2 and Acts 4, if you know me enough, that's, those are my favorite parts of the Bible because it talks about the church coming together to be, coming together, have fellowship, breaking bread together, doing life together, doing ministry together, taking care of each other. Well, one of the things that were being neglected because the, the apostles were so busy was the distribution of food. 
And so during that, during that time, they prayed and Philip was one of the men that was chosen by God to help distribute the food to the widows and people in need. And you can see throughout Acts until this point where God continues to use Philip. Now, what I love about Philip is he's just a, a willingly young man. He said, yes, he's being obedient. He's answering that call that God placed on his life. And as I think about, about Philip, you know, he was just a servant, right? He was a guy that wanted to help. He was a guy that was there to distribute food. It's, there's, no, there's nothing great about distributing food. There's, there's no glory in it. The, the apostles were out preaching a message. The apostles were out sharing the gospel, uh, doing miracles, doing the frontline stuff, right? And so you have Philip and the others, they're kind of behind the scenes in that. Sometimes there's not a whole lot of glory behind the scenes. I think of our production guys and we got Ramsey up there in online campus. The only time you know the sound guy is if we have some major feedback, right? And the other time we kind of walk in and we forget them because they're behind the scenes being used by God in such a special way. But we need behind the scenes people we need people to fill those roles. You know, one thing that, you, that a lot of you got to experience a couple weeks ago is, is basic training with your kids where we invited you families to go over in the kids area and just experience what your kids are experiencing in the kids ministry. And, and we got a lot of positive feedback from that. But that's kind of a behind the scenes ministry, right? We don't broadcast live in the SEC kids area, right? And Tammy's, Miss Tammy's probably like, thank goodness for that. But Philip's role was a behind the scene job of distributing food. And, and we really, if we really think about it, it seems like a small task. It doesn't seem that important. But what I believe is when you and I answer the call to God and we say yes and we are obedient, God can take that yes and turn it into something amazing. And to take it a step further is what we witnessed last week when we have a revival. I believe when, when we as a people of Jesus, when we believe and do the things that God's called us to do, we can start a revival right here in Plainfield, Indiana. And I believe we witnessed that last week. You know, we saw over 700 people in five days. We had over 25 baptisms and I, I don't even know how many accepted Jesus. And what I love about our evangelist, Nathan, Nathan will tell you it wasn't him, it was 100% God. Nathan was just obedient to his calling. But you put that into perspective. I want you to think about this for just a moment. I want you to think about this week, this past week, when you're getting in your vehicle, 99% of the time when you're in your vehicle, you're going somewhere, right? There's an intentionality. I get in my car you, this morning, when you came to church, your destination was to come to Second Chance Church. You went from point A to point B. Or when you go to work, point A to point B. Or you're going to a cookout later today, point A to point B. But here's what happened with Philip. The spirit comes to Philip and says, I want you to go down this road. Now what's neat about Philip is he didn't ask why, what's my purpose, what's my goal? He just said, yes, God. And see, in our culture today, we always wanna know the why and if you have Young kids or teenagers will drive you nuts because they always want to know why. Now, as adults, you know, some of the, uh, the number one best-selling books uh, for the New York Times right now is, is Simon Sinek's um, Know Your Why book and Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. We want to know why. We want to know what our purpose is. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Because if I don't know my why and if I don't know my purpose, I don't want to do it. And that's something they kind of drill into pastors is, is sell your vision to the people. If they know the vision, if they know the why, they'll jump on board. Well, here's Philip. God calls Philip to go down this desert road 
and just go. And he went. He didn't know his why, didn't know his purpose, but he knew that he was gonna follow God no matter where he sent him. How many of us would do that? How many of us are so in tuned with the Spirit? When you hear the Spirit's voice, you know the Spirit's voice and you know that God is sending you somewhere. I would imagine some of you probably don't because I'm right there with you. Sometimes we're so busy and we have our, we have our goals and we have our, our, our schedules. And sometimes we're so busy because the enemy tries to get us busy that we don't even know where God is sending us because we're so distracted. Not Philip. His heart was in tune with God. His heart was in tune with the Spirit. And instead of asking why or where am I going, he answered the call and he went. And as you read further in the story, what's awesome is that he takes this eunuch and he sees him. And the the Bible tells us in, in verse 29 and 30, it says, the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. And then what did Philip do? He didn't stop like, oh, got to check my Facebook. I got to send this tweet. No, the dude ran, right? Uh, The the Bible tells us he ran. Luke says he ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. And here's just what I find fast. I told you I love the story, so bear with me. What I love here is that he's reading from Isaiah 53. And I'm going to read a little bit for you here. Because it's, it's so good. 53, starting four, it says, Surely he took up our pain and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that was brought us, peace upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We are like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him all the iniquity of us all. Number seven, he, or verse seven, he says, I w- he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. The eunuch is reading the prophecy The eunuch is reading the before story, the prequel. And he doesn't know what he's reading because for him, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? He doesn't, you know, he, you know, the eunuch and those guys, they don't have the Bible, right? Paul hasn't been, um, he hasn't been uh, called yet. So half the New Testament hasn't been written. You know, a lot of stuff's going on and, and, and he doesn't know the whole story. So what is Philip? He runs up to the chariot and he's reading this. The, the eunuch is confused and what happens? Hey, my name's Philip. Let me tell you the rest of the story. Let me tell you what this scripture means. Let me tell you of this fulfilling prophecy And the eunuch had the blessing and the privilege to kind of see the whole story about Jesus' birth and his death and his resurrection. And the eunuch at that moment, as they're traveling along, gave his life to Jesus. And then he didn't stop there. Looks at Philip. Why shouldn't I be baptized, right? Uh, Jesus was baptized. I want to be like Jesus. So he orders the chariot to stop over and was baptized. Right time, right place, right moment. Guys, if this doesn't amaze you, how our God works, I don't know what else will. You can say a lot of things in life are by accident or coincidence. I believe that we only have 
divine appointments by our God. You're here this morning because God called you here as a divine appointment. There's something that God wants to tell you. He wants to challenge you. He could have given you tickets to the race. He could have gave you tickets to go fly to Florida. He could have gave you all kinds of other things, but he wanted you here in this room at this very moment because he has a message for you right here and right now. Is he calling you to be the Philip in someone else's life? Is he calling you to just listen to what he's trying to direct you? Is your, is your spirit in line with, with God? Are you open to what he's trying to tell you? Are you too busy? Do you have other distractions? Do you have other things that are more important? You're here and you're here by divine appointment because God has a message for you. And I don't know what that is. Maybe you're here because you just need to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're here, this is the only somewhat of peace that you've experienced once a week. You don't need a why. You don't need a purpose. You need God. You need to feel his presence. And I will tell you, he will use you beyond anything that you can imagine if you would just be obedient to where he's calling you to go. We talk about the one day principle. God will use you to be someone's one day to share the gospel to share his love if you would just allow him to use you. I want you to think about something. This is, did I tell you I love this story? You probably tell I'm a little fired up. Here's what's really neat about Philip and the eunuch. If you'd show that map. I want you to know this. So I'm gonna, I gotta get really close because I don't have my glasses. So in this area, in this map, you have Kenya, Sudan, you have uh, Somalia, Yemen. You have all these countries that surround Ethiopia, okay? And in all those countries, they have one thing in common. Can anybody tell me this is school? Anyone? What do they practice? Muslim, right? All those countries are all those countries are Muslim dominated countries. Here's the neat thing about this story. Ethiopia is a 100% and I, and I shouldn't say 100%, but 70% of Ethiopians are followers of Jesus Christ. Kind of neat, isn't it? And here's some other cool facts. I did a lot of study and I watched a couple of, of uh, BBC on YouTube. Here's a cool thing. They were a Christian nation before the empire of Rome. And here's another cool thing. They were the very first nation in the world to have Christianity as their main religion. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us about the eunuch and if we went back. But I have to believe, and I'm believing in how powerful our God is, is that it started on that day, on that road, when Philip said yes, and he was obedient, and he preached, and he talked about the gospel, and he showed the eunuch who Jesus Christ was and is. And here's Ethiopian out just a rich country of followers of Jesus Christ. Philip started out simply distributing food. He wasn't a politician. He wasn't a pastor. He wasn't anything where he wasn't, he didn't write like a bunch of books in the New Testament. 
It was just a man that was obedient to what, where God was sending him. And what I love about this, you and I can be a Philip if we are open to where God is leading us. You and I could be a part of, of someone's one day principle if you and I would just be obedient to where God leads us. I believe in my heart. I believe our God is so powerful. Our God is so powerful. And he loves this. He loves us so much that he would use you and he'd use you and you to not only change one person's life, but I believe he could spark a revival through you and in a country by you just saying, yes, God. When we experience God, life is changed in an instant. I look back at my life and I can see where God put people in my life, in my path. When Heather and I began to attend Second Chance Church, if we'd go back to 2014 or 13, whenever we started attending, I would probably punch you in the face if, it, if you said, hey, you're going to be a lead pastor, she's going to be the worship pastor. Or I thought you'd drinking a little too much of, a little bit too much alcohol. But see, that's what brought it, and I remember it was a Saturday night service, you know, Nevaeh and I were, were, were like, hey, we'll go check this church out. Josh is leading worship and we'll go check this out. And, and we went there and it was just like, wow. And then we went to the family, like, well, let's check it out. We don't want to really go to a church in Castleton. I mean, it's quite the drive um, from, from Plainfield. I mean, we weren't as far as Stylesville, Andy and Heather, um, but, but we were, it was still a drive, right? So we didn't intend to get hooked and loved and, and, and fall in love with this church. But we were obedient to where God was calling us. It was to say yes. And God takes that yes and transforms it into something you'll never, ever imagine. As the worship team comes forward, I want to tell you something amazing last week. I'll be honest with you. I, I, uh, the revival for me, coming up to the revival, I just did not have, I was excited, but man, there was just so much work behind the scenes that had to go on. But it was the first night of revival. And uh, we, had, we had a baptismal set up. And there was this young man, full of energy. And he says, I've got to be baptized. I've, I've, I've found Jesus. I've given my life to him. I don't want to wait. I want to be baptized. And so we, we, we walk with this guy and he gets in the water. And if you go to Nathan Harmon's Facebook page, you can see it. You can see Rob, Pastor Rob and I baptizing this, this gentleman. And um, it's a video for a promo that's coming up for one of his next revivals. But we baptize him and he comes out of the water and he is jumping up and down, screaming, hollering, yes, God, yes, God. Because he'd been living a life of misery. And what I noticed, what he showed me, he pulls up his pant leg and he's got a GPS device on his ankle. He says, I, I've been using my life and I've been throwing it away and I've been doing this and I've been doing that. I've been into drugs. I've been, I've been committing crimes and I'm on this GPS monitor device and I'm tired of living this way. And so he accepted God at the revival. And this is, this is the crazy thing. I don't know how he got there. He had no friends there. No one brought him. He wasn't there with family. He was simply by himself. 
And he said, I've got to be baptized. So this morning, my question to you, Second Chance Church, are you ready to be a Philip in someone's life? Are you ready to say yes? Are you ready to be obedient? Ephesians 5 says, be careful, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Each one of us have this calling, this challenge. And we are called and we are told not to be unwise. We are, we are called to share the gospel. We are called to be loved. We are called to be the body of Jesus Christ. If you don't tell your friends and your neighbors and, 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 your, and your loved ones, who will? If they don't see what Jesus has done in your life, who's going to show them? If you say no, that I don't want to be the Philip, then who's going to fulfill that role? Church, this is us. This is our time. This is time to, to spark that revival. It's, it's time to, to begin to love and to share the gospel because hell is real. But so is heaven. So this is my, my plea, my encouragement, my charge as your pastor. Begin today, right here, right now. And just have a spirit that says, yes, Lord, I don't need a purpose. I don't need a why. You just send me like you sent Abraham, like you sent Philip. And trusting and believing that God is going to send you exactly where you need to be, exactly the right moment in exactly the right place. That's how awesome our God is. He will put the puzzles together if you would just say yes. If you'd stand with me. If you bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to be in a spirit of, in a posture of, of, of just being open. What is God trying to tell you in this moment right now? Is he putting someone on your heart? Is there someone that, that God is calling you to share the gospel with? Is there someone that you know of that desperately needs to know the love of Jesus? Is it a neighbor? Is it a friend? Is it a loved one? Who is God calling you to be that person's Philip, to, to fulfill that one day principle so they can encounter and experience God like no other? I promise you, if you seek God and you pray and you're open to where God is leading, he will take you exactly where he wants you to go. So as I pray, I pray that your heart and your mind is open and that you would hear God speak to you and you would go and be obedient to where he's leading you. Heavenly Father, God, thank you. God, I give you praise and glory. God, what I love about Philip and so many of the other men and women of the, of the Bible is they were just people. They were just people. They were obedient. They were willing. And God, when you can take our obedience and our willingness, God, you can turn it in and you can make something glorious because that's what you want. So God, I pray that this church, our hearts, our minds are open to what you're leading. 
God, I can't thank you enough for what you do and what you've continued to do. I know there are some exciting times ahead of Second Chance Church and they're only exciting because God, you're right in the middle of, of those exciting times. God, we love you and we praise you. In your holy name we pray.